So earlier this year, there was a release from Citizen that quietly slipped through the cracks known as the Toyosa. Given its availability in select Asian markets, it didn't make a considerable splash upon its release, especially in certain parts of the globe. However, I bought the yellow variant, and I must say, it is a solid new addition to the market coming in at just $300. But just how solid is it? Let's jump into it. So now we're getting right into the middle of the holiday season. So last call on the webinar and also our financing on teddybaldesser.com. So everyone deserves a nice watch. So we are running a pretty crazy financing offer for 0% interest up to 24 months. So this is for a limited time for the holiday season. So definitely act fast. Just to give you context on how this works, say you wanted to buy something like the Tissot PRX, a watch that retails for $650. And with a zero interest payment over 24 months, you would only need to pay $27 a month to own that watch with no additional cost. Lastly, for any person who purchases from our site from around November to the end of the year, you are going to get an invite to our private live stream where I will be hanging out, answering some questions, but also I'll have a few members of my team also speaking about different topics and areas of expertise that they have. Will Bethune, who does all of our watch photography, I will give out some of his pointers. Also, we have our video content manager, Ben, who will be talking about the myths of dive watches as somebody who was formerly a commercial diver. And then Mark Bernardo, a watch industry veteran and journalist for the last two decades and author of the book Airtime. He'll speak a little bit more about the abbreviated history of pilot watches as somebody who legitimately wrote a book on the subject. I know you can buy watches pretty much anywhere throughout the holiday season, but we'd love to have your business. And also any purchase from our site is the best way to support the content that we're creating here. We don't make videos that the brands pay for. How we're able to fund these productions is through teddybaldesser.com. And you know, even these watches like this, you have to buy the watch. So it all just goes into just making this type of content happen. We really appreciate any business for the holiday season and also happy holidays to all of you. But now jumping in, so Citizen has developed a reputation as a fully vertically integrated Japanese watchmaker with roots dating back to 1930, having been founded by a team of both Swiss and Japanese investors. Over the course of the brand's 92 years on the market, the brand has risen to prominence by producing attainable quartz and mechanical timepieces directly towards a mass market consumer. However, in more recent years, Citizen has begun to increasingly lean into its most iconic designs while also appealing to the enthusiast community. Citizen is perhaps best known for its professional watches such as the depth gauge enabled Aqualand, the Promaster EcoDrive Divers, and the aviation inspired pieces like the Navihawk, all of which have their own followings. And this theme of shifting focus to the enthusiast market was only continued with the release of the Toyosa this July, combining the integrated form format with an inspired yet mass appealing dial. Lacking in US distribution and media coverage, the Toyosa managed to stay under the radar for longer than you'd probably imagine, being offered in a variety of variations with the model that we have here being arguably my favorite coming in this eye-catching yellow. To begin with our dimensions, we have 40 millimeters in diameter, a 45 millimeter lug to lug, not including the fixed center link, and a thickness of 11.8 millimeters. On the wrist, the watch wears generally more true to size than the norm of watches with this integrated category, making it a pretty reasonable dimension set for mass appeal. The end links on the bracelet also do not protrude out considerably, causing the bracelet to shoot more straight down to the wrist. The bracelet is integrated as mentioned, so you will need to find a custom solution for any secondary strap option, although the bracelet does taper from 22 millimeters at the case end to 18 millimeters near the stamp push button clasp, which is equipped with three micro adjustment holes while offering a wide range of smaller individual links. The bracelet looks the part with its rounded links, but this is the area that is probably one that shows its price more than anywhere else, primarily at the clasp that does have this metal sheet stamp profile that looks and feels cheap. This considered, the bracelet will do the job adequately enough given its price range. It is just not anywhere near close to the level of something like the Tissot PRX that now kind of sets the standard in this range. Now shifting over to the case elements, it has a number of angular facets that are polished, separating the vertically brushed top surface from the slender vertical sides. And quite frankly, it's very well done. 
The central case protrudes towards the back with a domed effect, leading to a screw down exhibition case back, offering a view of the automatic caliber lying within. In Japanese style, the crown is recessed into the case at the four o'clock position, offering an additional level of protection while also making hand winding a trickier endeavor in the process. Between the screw down case back and the push pull crown, the Toyosa family is rated for 50 meters of water resistance, perhaps being slightly less than maybe what you would expect given the many watches of the same ilk that are going to have that more established 100 meters of water resistance as the standard. Beyond its attention grabbing yellow color, the primary surface of this dial also serves up just a touch of sunray finish that plays well with the changing lighting conditions. The indices are rectangular in shape and raised with double up markings at 12 and six. Time telling is carried out with a pair of simple polished baton style hands that present the influence of the Rolex Oyster Perpetual without question. At three, the watch has a magnified date wheel, at 12, the citizen word mark, and at six, the simple automatic text. There is loom within the dial indices and the hands that is functional, but falls well behind some of Citizen's other aviation and diving offerings. So as many of you know by now, Citizen's movement manufacturing arm is Miyota, one of the largest third-party producers of quartz and mechanical movements on the entire planet. Now this watch utilizes the A210, a popular caliber coming from Miyota's 8000 series of movements that can be found in a wide range of price points in Citizen's own collection, as well as throughout the watch world. Running at three hertz or 21,600 vibrations per hour, the 8210 offers hand winding while providing power reserve of 40 hours, but is not going to offer any hacking functionality. Other than lacking this functionality though, this caliber is essentially the Citizen equivalent to the many 4R series of calibers you'll find from the newer Seiko 5 sports models that are also positioned in comparable price ranges. Visible beneath a mineral exhibition case back, the 8210 has machine finished gold tone bridges and a Citizen sign rotor. And while this caliber quotes a range of deviation to minus 20 to plus 40 seconds a day, this example when we tested it at five different positions was far exceeding that at plus seven to plus 11 seconds a day, certainly not bad for a watch in this price range. And just to unpack in terms of operation here of the 8210, we have 21,600 vibrations per hour, three hertz. It does feature hand winding, no hacking, and hacking again, stopping the balance wheel when you pull the crown to the farthest position. And again, a power reserve of 40 hours. All right, so now to unpack looking at this Citizen Toyosa and what my general take is on it. When I remember when seeing this for the first time, I was like, okay, that's pretty interesting. And I saw the price and I'm like, like, okay, you have my attention. Now, the obvious thing I think many people were looking at when looking at this watch were also thinking about the recent unveiling of the Tissot PRX and how just huge that watch release has been for affordable timekeeping, which I totally agree with. I think it is one of the best releases in the last five years for affordable watches. But how did this one stack up against it? I would say it's certainly an alternative and another consideration, but let's talk about some of the cons and then move into the pros as well as how it maybe relates to the PRX. First, water resistance. You're talking about 50 meters here. I don't think that's a big point for me because even with something like the PRX, I don't necessarily need 100 meters of water resistance. It's just nice to have. And when the competition has established that, I think you do have to put that down as a point of a con. Loom is also not going to be great, or at least on other conventional citizen standards, but I wouldn't say it's atrocious either. This watch doesn't feature hacking. And then in terms of the bracelet, I think this is probably one area that's going to fall the farthest behind the PRX. The PRX bracelet is way more comfortable. It feels more just slim on the wrist. And quite frankly, the clasp on this one is not that great. Although it does have points of micro adjustment, which is nice to see. And it does have this heavily inspired design, which I don't know if that's necessarily a negative or a positive. It doesn't look so far in one direction or another. It's kind of a combination of many different things. Dial is very Oyster Perpetual Rolex. Case is a little bit more I would say integrated in its style, of course. But then on the flip side, talking about why I do think this is an interesting watch if you do wanna get your hands on it. Now I spent more than probably what most people will go for because I bought this watch a few months ago and the hype was high. I think I spent over $400. And for that price, I don't think this watch really is that compelling. Uh, it's still good, but it's not value class leading by any means. But now looking at the price of this watch, if you can buy it on certain places, different sellers, you'd have to go to more unconventional sellers to get this, considering that it is more available for, I think the Japanese, Asian market, places like Singapore, 
you're going to have to go different unconventional routes. But if you can find this for say mid 200s, $300, I think it's absolutely a nice watch to consider. The case finish is really solid. I don't know if the bracelet, in terms of the finishing, actually wasn't bad at all. You almost have like a president type of bracelet look. The clasp is really where I thought it fell behind a bit more, but the case finishing, the architecture, pretty solid for a watch in this category. Dimensions of this piece is also wearable. One great thing about this watch that I noticed is it's going to wear pretty true to size, unlike a lot of other integrated style watches on the market. Typically what you're going to find is you're gonna have those male end links on that final link for the bracelet, how it meets the case. It's going to have that uh, lug to lug, which on paper looks like, okay, it's pretty compact, but then when you get it on wrist, it's gonna wear much larger than that. That's something with the Tissot PRX that does come up. This does not have that same effect, which I think some people might appreciate. Movement on the inside, of course, is reliable. You don't get hacking, but apart from that, can't really ask much more for a movement in this price category. And I think the dial colors are a lot of fun. They have just a slight little kind of effect to them with a sunburst type of sunray finish. It's not crazy matte or pastel-y as maybe like the Oyster Perpetual models that I think many people are going to classify these as alternatives to, but still some nice pop of color here. So what is my general take on this watch? I think if Citizen made this available in the United States, it would do exceptionally well. Is it something that I would say is a definitive alternative to something like the PRX? I wouldn't say a definitive alternative, but it's certainly an alternative. And one, if you are somebody that wants to go more into that Oyster Perpetual route, and you don't mind maybe some of the shortcomings with the bracelet, you like the wearability, which I think this is going to be a nice case size for a variety of people out there, this is probably the better way to position this watch. But I hope Citizen can bring this to the US market, different markets around the globe, something similar. And if Citizen does care, which I know they do, they care about this type of consumer, which is more of that enthusiast type of consumer, I do think these are the type of efforts that are going to allow them to get more people to look in their direction compared to say the Tissot's, the Seiko's of the world, primarily the Seiko's of the world, as well as some of those other offerings, some like Timex as an example. So if that's something that they care about, I think these are the type of watches that are going to allow that to happen. So all in all, another great affordable release from Citizen. But all right guys, that is my take on these watches. I know there probably aren't gonna be many people that have purchase these watches just given their availability in different parts of the globe. But what are your thoughts on these? What do you think of them? How do you think they stack up? I think generally pretty solid looking watches. I think there's going to certainly be a market for these. Uh, but if you do own these watches, what is your take? How do you uh, just, uh, what do you think about owning one of these watches? Let us see any ownership history down below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that as well. Definitely check out teddybaldesar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.